It's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. And today I'm going to show you how to make this fully edible chocolate shoe. Now I have made fully edible fondant shoes as well but oh my goodness it just takes so long for those to set and I always find that they're so fragile. Using chocolate is significantly easier and I also personally find it's tastier and it cuts the time down exponentially. So you'll notice what I'm doing here is I'm taking a version of candy melts. These are a little bit different than the Wilton brand that I've normally used, but you can use white chocolate as well or you can use milk chocolate. Keep in mind though, if you aren't using a candy melts version, you will have to temper the chocolate. So the reason that I'm using this today is because I really don't have to do anything. And yep, this is the first little fail here. And actually I don't have many more in this tutorial thank goodness but basically why that happens is because I didn't actually put enough chocolate into the mold so you do want to do this not only once but twice just to make sure that everything is nice and thick and a little tip I do recommend that you use a piping bag specifically for that heel portion because if you don't you might end up with air bubbles and you might not actually get the heel fully filled I placed this in the fridge for about 20 minutes, but honestly, it was already set around the 10 minute mark. I was just doing some other things and unmolding it is really simple. Once you initially break the seal, the other side comes off super easily, which is why I love this mold. There really isn't too much fiddling around with it and it doesn't break very easily, especially if you make sure to sufficiently fill this up. Now you will notice there are some imperfections when you pull it out. So I'm just taking my X-Acto knife and making sure to get rid of all of those. And if you're finding it's too hard to carve because maybe your knife isn't sharp enough you can heat it up a little bit with a torch or hot water just so that it glides through a little bit more easily now I could have spent more time doing that top portion but I know I'm going to be adding some fondant details to this so I'm not going to bother spending too much time on that I'm placing my shoe on a board because it is going to be really hard to work on if it's not balanced and I just torched the bottom a little bit to melt it and stuck it on there. I am going to be using these edible paints. Now if you don't have edible paints, you still want to find something that is oil based since you are going to be working with chocolate. So this does not work with your typical colorant. You can try it, but it'll probably resist. So I really, really love this particular brand and these paints in order to paint on chocolate. Now, if this particular portion is going a little bit too fast for you, I do have a live version, which I did yesterday, where I showed you guys how I actually painted this pattern. It's really, really simple, and I just kind of did my own thing. I could have projected a pattern onto the shoe, but I decided to just go with whatever felt right to me. I really wanted to do a spring pattern. I myself actually want to own shoes that have a floral pattern, just haven't been shopping in a little while. So what I'm doing here is I'm just laying down the color, and then I'm using the black to outline things and really define things. When I lay down the color, you really can't tell what's going on until I add this black definition. And it is super important to do this with a nice, fine lined paintbrush. Now the beauty of using this paint was that I was able to apply the color and then right away without any wait time, I was able to put the black on top as well. Now I could have waited in between to get an even darker, more saturated color on the black, but what I liked was that things didn't really mix together and it didn't create muddiness with the colors, which is exactly what I'm looking for. I also really liked that I was able to get the heel nice and black and a pure black. There was no kind of purplish tinge. It was black, black. So what I did for that was that I kind of waited in between just to make sure that I could get a really nice good coverage of that black color. Once I was happy with the pattern, I decided to go in with some fondant details. I have just a little dab of shortening there, which I kneaded into the fondant. And now I'm taking some edible glue and placing it directly on the chocolate. The edible glue is made with Tylos powder and a little bit of water. You just kind of mix it together until you get a consistency that you like. It should be fairly brushable, not too, too thick, so it's like a gel, because then that way it won't be able to spread really easily. And you do want it just slightly kind of tacky, so you can place on fondant details like this. Now when you're placing this on, it's a little bit more tricky than it looks. You really have to make sure that you're not pulling on the fondant. If you pull on the fondant at all, you're going to change the sizing of the fondant and then that's going to make it look really, really uneven. Whenever you're making something kind of realistic like this, where it does need to look like how a shoe would, you want to make sure that you are very, very precise with the way that you're placing this on. And I do this with my breath held most of the time because it is the part where I really need to make sure that I'm not pulling anything and I'm not changing anything. 
This is one of my favorite little cake tools. It's just a stitching tool, so you just run it all the way down. Sometimes though, if your fondant is a little bit too sticky or too malleable, I find that it kind of drags with this tool. So definitely make sure that that is not the case. And if you're finding that your fondant is too malleable or too sticky, just add a little bit of cornstarch to it, and it should make stitching really, really simple. And you wanna make sure that you go slow with this too. I did speed it up because honestly, I go slow and steady or else that stitching is going to end up in the wrong place. Now as you can see we are not happy with that inside of that shoe showing all that white and that imperfection so I'm going to go in and paint this whole thing black and had I known that that was what I was going to do in the first place I would have done that much earlier on in the process probably even before I actually painted the floral pattern. Now I didn't want to go crazy on the fondant work, but I did want to add a few details just to make this look more like a shoe. And so what I'm doing here is I created four equal pieces of fondant, rolled out thin, but not too, too thin, because if you do it too thin, you've got to wait for it to dry for a long time. So we want to have a little bit of thickness just so that we can get this on the shoe right away. And as you can see, I'm just looping it and then I'm pinching it together. Then I'm using that same edible glue, which is the Tylos powder and the water to make sure that it all goes together. And this center piece here, I I really want to make this look like fabric in the way that fabric would fall on a shoe so I'm kind of scrunching it together and then going ahead and adding this. Now I've mentioned this before in other videos but it's a tip that I want to share with you again. Don't apply too much edible glue because if you apply too much then it starts sliding everywhere but also don't apply too little because then obviously it's not going to stick. Now sometimes I do things out of order so that I can visually see things and this is one of those times if I was doing this properly I really should have placed that band down first then placed those other four pieces on top and then connected everything. Really making sure to give this a good pinch so that it all stays together and we're really just trying to cover up those bits in the center where everything is adjoining. Now I was a little bit worried that this might have been too large for the shoe. It ended up working out, but make sure that you do measure out how large your bow is going to be. I can't remember the exact mold size that I got. I believe this is either the large or medium size. Now you will notice that I sped that whole process up. Really though, you do have to make sure that you press in every part of the fondant possible. Make sure that that fondant makes contact with the shoe as much as possible so it really stays. I had no issue with that. It really stuck, gave it a nice little steam to get rid of all of that cornstarch and to make sure that it saturates that color just a little bit more. Now I'm going to be utilizing this as a display piece for my Mother's Day tea that I'm throwing tomorrow. However, you could definitely place this on a cake. I recommend that you do put some supports underneath so that it doesn't sink into your cake, though it is fairly lightweight depending on how much fondant you put on your shoe. And you can also just fill this up with some chocolate covered strawberries or some fruit. I've seen that being done too. Now let's get into the subscriber submission of the video. I am a sucker for a good rice paper sale. I love the look of this and I love that splash of gold too. So be sure to drop them a like and drop them a comment. And if you want to be the next subscriber submission of the video, then please follow me at SD Bake Shop on Instagram where you can either tag me in a photo or send me a photo. Any and all dessert levels are welcome. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!